G'day, I'm James. And today I'd like to talk about fractions. Because you know what? Fractions are actually hard. They're really subtle, they're really nuanced, they're really tricky. Fractions are hard. And this series of videos for all those who finally, for once in their lives, act actually want to get fractions. Really, truly understand them. And to do that, I want to go to the story of how fractions are being presented to us in the early grades. In fact, one of the first models of fractions we're given is this parts of a whole model. I think about the very beginning part of primary school, elementary school. Well, you might be given a set of kittens like this. You might be asked to do something like, please circle half the kittens. In which case, I've been asked to do an action. Circle half the kittens. Okay, half the kittens, I guess, will be these set of kittens there. There's half the kittens. Or you might be asked to say, circle a third of the stars. So you're doing parts of a whole, a third of that set of whole set of stars. So fractions there are really seen as parts of a whole. And the tricky part is that you have to do different holes in different contexts. For example, the hole here was this set of kittens. Over here, the hole was that set of stars. So what you really do is you start to associate fractions with actions drawing a part of a whole, an action. Not a number, it's an action. But you do associate the word of. So this model has you start thinking of the word of with those actions of circling parts of a whole. Now what's tricky is that the whole keeps changing from kittens to stars, or you might do something like this, which is trickier still. You might be asked to circle a third of half of the kittens. So that we might keep changing what the whole is in the same context. First of all, I had the set of kittens, that was my hole. I did half the kittens, there it is. But now I want a third of half the kittens, so now I'm gonna change my hole again. Oh, this is my hole, in which case a third of half the kittens is maybe those two kittens there. There's a third of half of the kittens. I kept changing the hole, that's the tricky part of this first model. But the key thing is, school says, let's just start associating the word of with fractions. But then we change models. Let me clean the board. At some point of our schooling, pi enters our lives, and we start to think of fractions now as division of objects, in particular division of pi. For example, here is a third of the pi. What you do is you divide the pi into three equal parts, and we call one of those parts here a third. There is a third of a pi. Now, still thinking of parts of a whole, but now actually thinking of dividing up pi. We get the notion of dividing in our heads. So there is one third of a pi. And we start learning fractions like a half would be half the pi, something like this, or a quarter would be a quarter of the pi, something like this, and a fifth would be a fifth of the pi, and so on and so on. We start learning about the basic fractions. One half, one third, one fifth, one quarter, one sixth, one ninth, whatever order I'm doing it in. Bingo, great. But then we actually start thinking of things like two-thirds, two-thirds, a little bit cl uh, clunkier there. But if you think about what I just said in English, I said two-thirds. It sounds like I'm saying two of the thirds. This is literally two copies of one-third. Oh, we start saying what we bought now. English says two copies of one-third. That would actually be two copies of one-third. There is a picture of two-thirds. So now we start thinking of more complicated fractions as parts of a pie. If I actually did this, three-thirds would be three copies of one-third. If I actually draw a picture of three copies of one-third, one copy, two copies, three copies, I start to see little equivalences. Oh, that's the same as one whole pie. I start seeing what's going on there, which is grand. In fact, it looks like we're starting to do some work with numbers on these things called fractions. So now we're starting to think of fractions as some sort of having some sort of arithmetic. For example, I can add fractions when I'm thinking of portions of pi. Look at this. Here is uh, one fifth of a pi. Oh, how do I draw one fifth? There's one fifth of a pi. And suppose I say I'd like to add two fifths of a pi. Well, physically what you do is, okay, I want one fifth and I've got two fifths, I'll get another pi, divide it to two fifths, I would take two fifths of it, and I can see, oh, I'll put those together, smoosh those pieces together, and I would actually have three fifths of a pi, which actually fits our language. One copy of a fifth plus two copies of a fifth does indeed make three copies of a fifth, and I'm starting to see that I can do arithmetic. So these things, these parts of a whole, are starting to have some arithmetic to them, which is great. So now we're learning about addition. We can now start doing addition and other basic arithmetic on fractions here. But still not quite right, it's a little strange. I mean, if they're numbers, then I should be able to multiply them. But I have no idea, I'll admit this, I have no idea, what is this picture, one-fifth of pi, and this picture, 
two fifths of pi multiplied together. What does it mean to multiply two portions of pi? I have no idea what that means. That's just, that's, that doesn't make sense. There's no meaning of multiplication when I'm thinking of division of objects. So then, school says, let's change our models again. I'll be right back. So at this point, we've associated the word of with one version of fractions. We've started seeing you can do arithmetic on another version of fractions, but not all the arithmetic. So then school models typically go to a third way to think of fractions as points on a number line. And they say to do the following. Okay, we're dividing pies earlier. Now let's divide the unit interval, the little piece of its line segment between 0 and 1 on the number line. Let's say divide it into thirds, just like we're dividing the pi. We divide it into thirds. Bingo, bingo, there is one third. Let's just draw one third there on the number line. And then actually, it kind of matches what we were doing before, because if I take one copy of this and do a second copy of that, I'll be right there, where that mark really was, that would be at two copies of one third, two thirds. And one copy, a second copy, and a third copy, oh, gets me at three thirds, which I saw in the previous section really does match with one. This is all hanging together beautifully. So this seems to capture the idea of divisions of pi, but now I'm doing division of segments on a number line, and I start marking fractions on the number line. It's a little bit strange because that suggests then maybe fractions really are numbers, because I happen to just mark them there on a number line. Very curious. But we play with this because I can even do something like 7 thirds. Now remember, we said here that it actually really means 7 copies of one third. So one, two, three, a fourth copy, a fifth copy, a sixth copy, and a seventh copy, and you see it actually would be there. Actually, that gets us into a little bit of mixed numbers. That's like two whole units and an extra third. That's two plus one third. By the way, people tend to get lazy and don't write the plus sign here when you've got a whole number and a fraction. They'll write that as two and one third. But we say two and one third. We say the and, we just tend not to write it. But there we've got a nice interplay there between um, uh, whole numbers and mixed numbers and improper fractions, all the rest. All that stuff is there. But again, now this point is actually, this, this point on number line is really strongly saying to the, the, the subliminally, or you know, implicitly, that fractions are numbers. After all, I'm actually putting them, on, uh, putting them on the number line. So something is big going on there. We're saying to students, fractions are numbers. We're putting them on the number line. In which case, we should be able to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, which I couldn't do with pi, and division. And then suddenly we just leap into all those arithmetic of fractions as though it's all natural and right. So what we really need here, this is why people don't get fractions the first time through. We can all do them, we can still struggle doing them, but we told the mechanics of them, but we don't really internalize them. We haven't got them in our brains, in our guts, we haven't got them in our hearts. We don't have fractions because I, what I really need is not three separate models that give me partial truth, partial truth, partial truth. It would be absolutely lovely if I come up with one single model that illustrates all the principles of fractions I want to be true. One that actually covers this model and covers this model and in some sense covers this model as well would be magical. And I'm going to share that one model with you in these videos. And what that one model is going to reveal is that, okay, it too is a model, it only speaks partial truth. But from it, we will get five principles that are very natural and obvious from it about how fractions should work. And actually, once you've got those five principles down, they're all very, very natural, all very easy, that model, then actually everything we do in school about fractions follows logically from those five ideas. By the way, I can point out the first two of those five principles actually follow from those ones, and the fifth one actually follows from those ones as well. It really comes down to two key beliefs about how fractions should work, from which everything about fractions follows logically. So what I want to do in this series is present that one single model, and it's five basic principles that actually make fractions work the way they do and everything absolutely everything we've taught in school follows from it logic by pure logic wow well i can't wait to get cracking so let's um let's do it